Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Carl. I lost count of the weeks because there was a hurricane last week and we couldn't do the reading. So <laughs> I don't know what week it is, but um, we've been doing it since the middle to end of March. Uh, on Sundays, we get together and I do a live poetry reading just to pass the time while well, everyone has to stay inside and away from other people as much as they can because of COVID-19. So, um, so today I'm going to read a selection of poems that I wrote in 1992. Wow. <laughs> um, so to set it up, I actually have to go back to the fall of 1991. Um, I was a student at the New College of California, and there was a, a poetry workshop that I took, um, which I'll talk more about next time. Um, but the sort of relevant uh, thing about the poetry workshop for this reading is that um, I became friends with one of the other students in the class. It was a woman named Andrea Master. Uh, and Andrea was at that time also the literary intern at Intersection for the Arts, which is a San Francisco institution. I think it's still going, um, located in the Mission District. And they sponsored literary, theatrical, and artistic installations and performances um, and supported, supported local artists. And actually, they brought I think they brought in artists, too, but I think they focused a lot on Bay Area artists. Um, uh, and so one evening, either before or after the poetry workshop, um, Andrea was showing me some work by the, the poet who was currently the writer in residence at Intersection, um, a guy by the name of Daniel Davidson, um, who's a brilliant writer. Um, I recommend if you get the opportunity to read his book, Product. Um, that you take that opportunity because it's really great. Um, sadly, he, he took his own life a few years later and never got to see that published. It was published posthumously. Um, but I was really impressed by his writing. And so I started exploring um, the work of the other writers, his work, and also the work of the other writers in the, the literary journal that Andrea had shown me his work out of, which was um, Rod Smith's literary journal called Ariel, which he published out of Washington, DC. Um, and that led me over to readings at Small Press Traffic Bookstore, which was uh, also in the mission. Um, and I discovered that there was this whole scene uh, of this, uh, which constituted a branch of experimental writing in the Bay Area that included uh, the language poets and a whole generation of poets that came after that that were uh, writing partially in response to the language poets. Um, and so I got involved in that whole scene. And that had a huge impact on my writing. Um, as I became more interested in using poetry as a vehicle to explore um, the whole process by which we, we make meaning out of language um, in the first place. Uh, so, but most of the, most of these poems that I'm going to read today were written before that impact had reached into my writing. So, the thing that struck me when I was reviewing this work 28 years later, a lot of which I had forgotten writing, <laughs> um, was how much more prominent the internal emotional content is, um, and also the E.E. E. Cummings influence. Um, once you kind of strip away that languagey layer that got laid down later in the poetry. Um, anyway, so in January of 1992, Intersections Poet in Residence was Steve Benson, um, one of the original group which became known as the Language Poets, and he was leading a poet's theater workshop, um, which culminated in two public performances. And because Andrea was the, the literary intern, she was able to kind of sneak me into the workshop through the side door. Um, and. So I got to participate in the, the Poets Theater workshop, which was pretty thrilling for me. Um, and so the first piece that I'm going to read today is a, per, a piece that Andrea and I wrote together and performed together at the Poets Theater. Um, and we alternated stanzas in the performance, um, but it can be read solo. So, um, so I'm going to read that. 
It's called Strands. Silently, a lamp is burning at the limits of desire and sky. Its glassine shell created in, in a wash of sand and silence. Shh. The sky is moist with a gentle streak of tears, creating a texture revealed in rare bursts of sunlight. On the strand where sand meets shore, white hair entangled in green-brown strings playing over tan sparkles. Their rhythm a backdrop on which thoughts rise, growing towards the cloud of mists. We trace white spray lines back to the rock's wrinkled faces. With their faces turned upwards, they do not discern the arching shadows. The shoreline is illuminated. Between folds of the cliff faces, we become the line we tread, resolve finally into foam and froth sand and salt-kissed sea wind. Shh. And the shore awaits intake of salted breath with its array of curled sea hair and flickering silver that brushes over the finely felt siphoning of sand on the invisible hand. Shh. A Poetics of Fatigue. Run along the rim of pale consciousness, skating into mythic insomnia dream. At no other time is orange. Never again is shaped like a bulging oval pregnant with tiny hard grains of seed to pelt away sleep should it threaten. This frenetic deadness implodes in disoriented background sound awareness, mesmeristic infusion of feeling steals in. Sleeping as part of a pair, the conscious center shifts, orbit redrawn outside the single mind to where skin touches or breath falls. Circumfer circumference of sightscape, we hear in the voice of the other, what we would once have pushed out at the next twitch of eyelid or toe curl. The poem as nervous exhaust, thought grows a thick skin to stretch across the fabric of queasy reawakenings, the ramble a rare conquest of borders, the gray area collapsing into fine line, your mind inside. The poem untied crawls back up spine, beating on the brain of sleep. The French poet Rambeau had this theory about um, poetry as being the stemming from the derangement of the senses, and he achieved that state by using like drugs and alcohol and stuff. But I thought that you could do it just as well by not sleeping enough. So <laughs> that was where that poem came from. This one's called The Sea Inside. At the swell of seawall, two sparrows limp through crippled sky. Self-betrayed, I swallow scenes as these. The moon and sea so easy to go to, their rhythm unceasing, reassuring, washing under me. With the sun chinning up on dawn's horizon, penknife in hand and no saint, I eviscerate all eidetic reduction. Sun rays strike heavy, shriveling, shriveling trees which teeter in torment, unmoored from fixtures, uprooted by turns of mechanist hour. The rain batters anonymous caves whose form I engrave myself in, 
makes detergent rivers run frothing, tumescent swell, urgency gives sense to this sauna. I see the moon and see night's bathwater heat dissipated into small incisions of horizon thrown out of my hand. This one is called Regeneration, has a visual component. I wrote the stanzas out in uh, sort of little blocks that were spaced out on the page. You can see that. Um, I read this uh, in public once, and I tried to um, embody the spacing on the page by moving to different spots in the room as I read each stanza. And it was, uh, it was kind of a small crowded room that I was reading in. And so it had two doors on the right hand side. Um, and so as I was reading it, um, the easiest way for me to get from the spot I was at at one point to the next spot was to go out one door and come back in the other. <laughs> and uh, so everyone in the room thought that the reading was over and I had left. <laughs> And then I kind of came back in and kept reading and everyone was very confused for a second. <laughs> so, so I won't try to duplicate that here. So, um, but the poem is called Regeneration and it has three parts. Um, and each part has three stanzas and the three stanzas are all spaced out on the page. So, um, but I don't know if all that's important or if uh, that was just something I did to make it look interesting on the page. So part one, grow the whole from the limb you let lapse into empty set. Returning ready for words of regeneration, combining the nervous mind with what will arise in spontaneous nascence, an alchemical lizard. Two, the speech act is active passive prophet awaiting orders. I shout this small shyness off neural rooftops, touched tenebrous with terror. Reiterated member of memory, meaning visionary revisceration, absorbs whining sun. Three, reanimate umbilical sensitivity sensibility, actually, a branch of atoms swollen out leaving, sweeping swaths tail across the lay of land, reallied with its porous largesse. This imagistic staple in brachiated algorithms, we are dream flesh. This seems like it must have been a uh, an assignment in a class. Um, it's called permuting, perm, permuting Gertrude. So it's a play on the, the language and the style of Gertrude Stein. And it's in two parts. Part one is called Tender Buttons after Stein's work of that same name. Sun, day, night, moon, light. Sunday night moonlight traveling Monday daylight night moon thickens into cricket shiver, contemplation of breathy effervescent celebration. Standing with knots untied in rain undried is wrong, right, wrong. Night light shows green bright target to traveling head, trip to tongue, so speak, so spell, so say so. So even, eventually so sober cold, even evening out outside door over opening, 
over there, overhead, overhang, over easy easing under western walrus rapture. Take the overture over time under wing and wail. Lifting summer insect song, sails upwind, upside, astride, bright green asparagus moon, light, day, night, sun, traveling night sun, day moon, light, light. And part two is called Meditations on Stanzas in Meditation. Stanzas in Meditation being the Gertrude Stein work that this is a meditation on. And it's divided, all kinds of subdivisions in this. Uh, it's this part two is subdivided into six subsections. So. <clears throat> One, make a house a home, any house a home. Your home is in a house, make it your home in a house. And when the house guests arrive, arriving, they will find the house a home and they will be home guests, guessing how the house that they are guested in, guessing how the house was made a home for them, a home for guests. Two, host the home guests in your house a home for if guests are not homemade, they are housed flabbergastly. Not, house, not hosting is homely. Not homing on guest needs is hostile. Not gracefully guesting one's house guests is ghastly. Three, is the fire burning? Is the kettle on? Are the beds made? Are the towels out? Is the bathroom clean? Are the lights working? Is everyone awake? Is everyone smiling? Are the playing cards new? Is the fruit waxed? The vacuums, the rugs vacuumed? The toys picked up? The new cake baked for company? Four, no parasite in paradise, oh no, they do their share. All those who need us to survive and thrive and share in paradise they do likewise no parasites abuse guest host become a ghost of ghast to us who take them in who let them in and well come in they reciprocate reiterate the allocated eden gift and when you're there they're sure to share their pitched in tent with you They'd pitch a bed for you if you'd go there, but they are here, and so you share your share at home with them. Five. A barbecue leaves curlicues of smoke up in the trees. The summer trees of breeze will certainly fan the smoke you leave out of food and barbecuing food for guests, for friends, for family, for summertime, for memory, for habit's sake, for summer smoke, a barbecue of some small thing made large in summer memory, leaves smoke in trees, in memory, in trails of memory, in smoke, in pleasing shapes like curlicues of barbecue. Six, she writes her own self in self-biography, but she who writes is not she who is written, she is not she, her little dog knows, in the biography of self. She has moved around the center of self with the other and writes as self, as other, as other self, writing self, writing other, writing other self, the same as if other were self or self were other, the same as if the self were around, as if they were the same around the center in between, she writes around between self and other. The others, the selves, she writes in, she writes out, writes around the selves of others. Her little dog knows the selves of self, the othering of, decentering of she, of I, of she's and he's and I's or is.
And here's another um, bunch of collected uh, short poems that were inspired by haiku. Um, these were written over a five-year period. It looks like four and a half year period from 1987 to 1992. And I'm not going to read all of them, but um, I'll kind of pick out the, the ones that look like it's a good moment to read them. A lot of them have titles, which is odd for haiku for me. <laughs> Usually I don't title my haiku, but back then I did. So the first one is called Dead Show Haiku. The streetlights in Long Beach look like bug-eyed crucifixes. Travel Haiku. Flight attendants. Careful, they could be mimes. Honorable death haiku. Dead bee in the road. I wonder if he got to sting anybody. Half invisible, floating above the teacher. The word eidos. Just Greek for image. That was a that was a dream. That should be titled dream haiku, I guess. We're kicking at eight, trying to knock it over to infinity. Saw Jack LaLanne at the Whole Earth Expo. He had his gypsy boots on. A savage moment. Sleep claws at you with little demoniac nails. Night talk haiku. The ducks applauded. The moon twisted on the lake. Then the mist closed in. Haiku of the post-rapturists. The apocalypse already happened and none of us qualified. There aren't enough seats. Let's declare a moratorium on gravity. I sneezed on hate street, opened my eyes. There was a dime in the gutter. Urban epic haiku. The rhythm of the driver's foot taps gave the children vertigo. It's on the brakes. All right, that's enough haiku. Apocalypticians process entropy, moving masses in moral Judas. They know what is meant in its concealment. Practicing grip maintenance, they save savagery from the savage. Apocalypticians appraise a planet, assessing its assets in extraction of existence from grounding in Earth. When location slides away, we find our stance is on map and money no compass. They create a notion of profit, a nation positing new clocks with end points. Oh God, come again, fire sale, everything must go. This one's called Street Bleat Repeat. It's for Leslie Simon, who was the, um, the teacher of the poetry workshop that I taught. Um, so I think this bounced off of a poem that she read um, at an open mic. Uh, she was the featured reader at an open mic and a bunch of us former students showed up and read in the open mic section. Remember when the whole Laguna fell into an oak in the hole of hell, the lake of flame? Hello, lower hate. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hate lowered the boom on Laguna. Hello, fellas. Holy hell. Hot day, huh? 
I fill more holes every day in a haze. It's crazy. Mad dog, turn the page. Laguna fell. So that, if you're familiar at all with San Francisco, that references a lot of street names in San Francisco and also a couple of bars in the Lower Haight, or actually bars in the Haight. There's one in the Lower Haight and one in the Upper Haight. Um, funny, there was in 2014, the musician Robin Hitchcock put out an album that has a song on it called San Francisco Patrol. And one of the verses mentioned drops a lot of San Francisco street names. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. And then when I was going through and found this poem I had written in 1992, I was like, well, no wonder I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so this one is called The Mythology of Music. Um, this was published in a, an anthology called The Love Project. The music between us has come. It enters our bodies and the spaces between them and fills our feeling with the feeling of union of you and of me. Notes slipping in through our eyes arising, falling into harmonic architecture of self. The mythology of self sets sequences. Identity threads this note as a bead onto a thread of intensity long and longing drawn closer and closed up into our circle. Your music arcs through me and I am dissolved, but still distantly I deliver my melody into our sculpture of sound and sense, air and breath. When being expands into this nexus, a musical moment opened out to unending, on the skein of time our song will embrace the breath of myth. I stand in you sometimes and see from you the world you see. With your ribcage sheltering me, I look out over sublunary landscapes, shattered air which jags our breath, catching notes of motion and pushing back into ourselves, ourselves. Violent vibrations repelling our instincts, diverting some once the vision of touch. Here is a speech phrase I hear, it is you. You are singing us into enclosure. Contact and context form as an arena constructed out of longing and lexicon. And in this building, we make borders to cross them. You play me out, racing up scales and down meters, melting the shape of separation. Slipped quietly into sounds interplay, we form an edge, but not an end of time teasing patterns of memory into monuments of liquid shape, fanning fluid metaphors out over our voices. In. Inside is the origin. Inside lets it begin. In as a preface appeals to a potent solipsism. We pretend a desire put there by its object and called forth by incantation, but like art love calls only for the is of I. When I woke up this year, I meant to stretch and alone to embody an antidote to alienation. On guard for it, I would swallow it and swaddle the outside in engagement transformed from fear, I fell, a small fall, passion melting back into compassion. I encompass my project anew, aware, attesting to our own moon sunburnt, but sky stuck and staying. Mimesis. This is another one that's got a shape that can't really be reproduced in the reading, but I can show you on the page. In imitative form, I rest existence from forest, surroundment, 
topple a tree to illustrate others to others, open holes to whole, seek to speak, silence, period. Indivisible, barely ingested by bus drunk streets and waiting at dream pace, dream pace, the straying mind man slips between sidewalk cracks and corpses which cower, crawls into sun squint sequence of civil immolation, its merciless immersion making no magic. Unsympathetic medicine, melted motor rush, leaves no proof but precipitates. My catalyst, converted, fell out the bottom. Isolation, solace, unsatisfactory. My breaks down atomic, molecular gluon, disarrayed, sequence squelched. Talk, somebody, me, up. This one is called compression number one. It has a little arc. There's a arc outward on the first part and an arc back on the second. Again, that's not it's not really important to the way it's read, but um, when it's on the page, it looks kind of interesting. It kind of makes a something <laughs> when you see it on the page. Um, this was published in Lyric and number one, number three, along with the next poem that I'm going to read. All smooth curve and no edges drop the ache of head in mind matter, rhythm inflected to tuned, a loop behind the under of shield of essent. A trick strung straight in, interstitial and empathed. Sharp to rapier will, lost of power, demand, eject, press, inbuilt. Discourse functional. Funneling fury, asylum settler, as the strand itself lengthens to fill field. The bits compress to minutia. At the clash of moments, the short shield circuit and repulse. Re pulse. Pulse again in symbiosis with abstract pattern, a problem, arbitrary, forged symbol and mnemonics of institution. Trace of taint entering thought of you. Blue tincture tags it in easing analysis, as though this myth making were ever islanded. My eyes pick out glass, piece at half block. In avoidance, a need arose, once stray surge of something, desire in hearing, uncloses clasps, opens cell longing, and smooth seen edges curveless. And I should probably point out that uh, I was not aware at that point that the word taint <laughs> was uh, being used as synonymous with perineum, so it's using that word to mean something different. <laughs> so this one is called The Diner After the Show. After all of a brief timbre, the tantra of plant life aligns with waitress braille. I dumbly rearrange fork and flange rinsing smokened hair, lash whipped, the eyes rolling clean and full lit, reiterative. His tangential essence is that of gradual recline into body being realistic, conjunction flattening ephemera into overflow of wonder feeling, fulling, filling, falling open eared out of sound stage, stone struck flourish, fathoms, a fathoming of feathery bellwether, or if in instancy as standing within, apart, and subtotal, time to pay the tab fabulous, this sweet awaiting will awaken when, a 
until before. So that was kind of Cummings-y. And this one is actually called 4EE e. Cummings. When science fails to unearth world plus trees obscure forest plus vision failing unconservatives cut plus wonder at fuss over forest of stumps plus choiceless bumblebees fucking clumsy run into our fictive foreheads when plane slaloms across sky shelf plus Plain awaits airy candor, grace racing above green wave, plus pivots palatial over glowy clouding groves. When we taste the lazy flavor of factory in voice, screaming smoke, plus see the smirking stoker score a score more choking children. When whale watching, we wait for the word to wage war, the sea wavy this day, plus close to surface bird lines fly, concatenation of cormorant, plus tufted puffin planet relegates regulations. Your space, this pace, points the engagement of daylight, daiktik, wakes me in the time stream slips me through fall sieve and saves the when and where for later disappointments such as fail here to appear i pop straight out top of bed avoiding wrong side all plus two plus gather parentheses Uh, in August of 1992, John Cage passed away. Um, he was an experimental musician and also probably less well known as a poet. Um, so the, the poem is in the form of one of Cage's uh, styles of acrostic. Um, ordinarily acrostics, um, you know, an acrostic is a poem that has has the lines that go across the page, but also it forms words and, and or phrases and or names um, that go down the page. Ordinarily acrostics, um, the down part goes down the left margin, um, but Cage, so far as I know, he's the only person that I know that did this, um, uses this form where the down portion of the acrostic actually goes down the center of the page and the lines can go out from either side of that. So it's not all, it's not all left margin dependent. So, um, so I use this name going down the center and um, wrote the poem off to the sides. El reloj es enamorado. The lessons in logic subverted and their subversions subverted. John Cage, you did it. You beautified speaking and silence both. Pardon my Spanish pronunciation, but that phrase uh, is Spanish for the clock is in love. And then uh, this is the last poem I'm going to read. May have been the last poem I wrote in 1992. probably due to that fact. It's called To the Winter Solstice. It starts with Goethe's last words, which were Mehr Licht, which is German for more light. Now the shape of day turns about face, marches back upscale to meet Goethe on his deathbed. Night's shores will recede, of course, as title, light bleeds in to flood its beachhead. Storm the moon, the sun is on the line, withholding its presence that we may grow giving like a new sense to guide us through the flourishing dark.
Thank you. It's going to be all for this week. <laughs> so let's see if there are any questions. There's a comment, like the siren. <laughs> I didn't notice, but I assume that means an ambulance went by at some point <laughs> while I was reading. We're right on the street, so. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be all for today. Um, I am finding this to be a very soul-nourishing exercise to go through every week, um, going back and reconnecting with my creative uh, impulse and its history and its products and so I hope that um, by sharing that I'm I'm uh, helping you connect with some soul nourishment as well and um, so we have at least one more week doing this I know I wrote some stuff in that workshop in 1991 that is probably okay so <laughs> so I'll go back through it to make sure and we'll uh, I'll I'll read again next week and then we'll we'll see what happens so thank you very much for sharing this time and uh i hope everybody stays safe and we all get through this goddamn year alive <laughs> and uh everybody take care bye <laughs>